Welcome back, everybody, to the Squid Talk podcast. I believe this is episode five. We got Sam Zia here today. Sam's a big TikToker. He actually just passed me as of yesterday, um, but he's only been doing it for like three months now, which is absolutely insane. I think it's the most growth I've ever seen um, in a new TikToker. Usually there's like a, a huge um, kind of stale period where you have to find your content, find yourself, get noticed, but he started blowing up right away. Um, so very excited to have him today. I'll let him introduce himself and let's kind of get like a backstory on who Sam is. Where are you from? How'd you get into this? What's going on? Yeah. Why should people listen to you most importantly? Yeah, why should people give a fuck about what I say? Well, I would I would consider myself uh, uh, someone with like a lot of perspective because I've been to so many places. Uh, so originally I was born in Vancouver and I moved to Iran. I moved to the Middle East when I was three because uh, my mom passed away when I was three years old and my dad couldn't really take care of me alone in Canada. So he kind of, uh, he was like, let's move back to Iran because both my parents are fully Persian. I'm like Iranian as far back as it goes. So we had, I, we had like a bunch of family in Iran. So we basically went and lived in an apartment with me and my grandparents. My dad lived the uh, apartment under us. And basically I grew up in Iran. I grew up in the Middle East, just went to basic public school in Iran and just did, just was educated and raised, uh, around like the Iranian culture and like I learned the language obviously I'm fluent uh, yeah. I know how to read write all that your stuff your English is pretty good though I mean you've you've been over here for a while though now uh it's not really so when I talk I, I I never had an accent so this was because just growing up my dad loved watching American movies and like we would always watch American movies together and my only form of entertainment was YouTube and like just short form content at the time like I would watch a whole lot of Vine like I loved Vine um so every, all of my entertainment was like in English, but everything that I read, everything that I learned was in Persian. Um, but basically when I turned about 14, my dad was kind of like, you know, education system isn't the greatest in the Middle East, you know, uh, not great teachers. Teachers don't really care. And also uh, in Iran specifically, you there's there's mandatory military. So you have to go to military when you turn 18. You know, I was, <laughs> I was yeah. not trying to do not all that. that. Sure. Yeah, not. it's not really, yeah, not really my cup of tea. But Fair. yeah, so I moved to the U.S. when I was 14. The reason I didn't move, a lot of people ask this, why didn't you move to Canada? The reason I didn't move to Canada, I, I have nobody in Canada. I still have nobody in Canada. I live in Canada. I live in Vancouver basically on my own. Obviously, like I live on my own, but like I genuinely have no like immediate family around me yeah. either. Well, sorry, sorry to interrupt real quick, but so Sam's 19, owns his own house in Canada. Are you, wait, are you renting? Or are you no, renting? I'm renting. He rent it. He's renting it, but he's, he's doing very well for himself as a 19 year old, fully on his own. Most kids are going to college, still under their parents' roof, still getting a, a salary or a, a, you know, what do you call it? Um, an allowance from an their allowance, parents. He's yeah. completely uh, dependent on himself. So he's killing it, but sorry. Yeah. Continue. Little, I remember. <laughs> When I was in, when I was in freshman, you know, this is this is a different story. But anyways, um, so yeah, it, then I moved to the U.S. Obviously, I was uh, I was about fourteen years old. I have my aunt and uncle, so my dad's sister and her husband. They were they were living in the U.S. They had a house in the Bay Area, so they both have they both have really good uh, good paying tech jobs. Um, my aunt would work from home, so she could easily take care of me. Um, but yeah, I, I went to a school about like 15 minutes walking distance from my house and it was, it was a decent experience. The school was a little bit questionable, but, uh, it was, it was good. I lived in a good area. Um, it was like my life really took a turn, um, going from like Iran to the yeah, U S it's like a, it's a completely different world. It's very, uh, it's a lot better. It's a lot better for sure. Um, as as far as education goes, obviously, like as far as like making friends, all that, it's a it's a way less toxic, way less dangerous, and it's a way more interactive. Less toxic, really. Yeah, it's less School toxic for Iran. sure. Yeah, yeah. No, Iran. I mean, dude, they would like they would beat the shit out of you. Like, I, I was like, okay, I gotta be, gotta keep it real. I was very picked on when I was in middle school in Iran, because. When I tell people I'm Iranian, they're like, what the fuck? No, you're not. You don't look Iranian at all because the, the Iranian stereotype is like, you know, a little bit darker than me, hairy yeah. as fuck. Um, but I was I was very picked on 
in in middle school because I was the one with like the brightest skin. I had like the you were most... like the black sheep. Kinda. Exactly, exactly. Sheep. I had I had like a I had lighter sh- lighter hair, so I, I I looked a little bit more uh, blonde. Uh, mm-hmm. It was like light brown hair, and it's like that shit is like it's. People are weird uh, in Iran about that stuff, especially guys. Like, it, nothing like happened to me or anything, but like, yeah. I would get picked on a lot for being like the the pretty boy, and I would get like I would get bullied a lot there. But it would, oh. it, it changed when I came to the U.S. Everybody kind of looked similar to me. But yeah. in Iran, like, and like I was maybe thirteen, had like a bunch of fourteen year olds in my class fat ass beards like you genuinely they hit puberty so quick um i don't know how they do it there man i don't know how they do it interesting so when you came over here were you like excited to start a new life or were you pretty like intimidated or both so i was i was definitely very sad i was very sad because at the moment i did not know how much of a horrible place iran was how much of like a place with no opportunity compared to the rest of the world. Yeah, obviously. Or, or obviously. the US or something. There was like, there was yeah. no opportunity in Iran. Like it's like even like getting a job. Uh it's yeah. like you know, like why would you get a job in Iran? It's like you uh-huh. like everybody's trying to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Um so what was your original question? So so you come over here, um, have to start a new life, and then what so a lot, if you guys are watching and you follow Sam, you know, he's a TikToker, you know, he's got a big audience. Um, but I just recently found this out. I didn't even know this originally, but you've been like an entrepreneur for a while. You've kind of been hustling and doing your own thing even before you started the TikTok. Was that something that like was instilled in you from the beginning in Iran or when you came over here? Like, how did that start your entrepreneurial journey? So it's kind of funny. Uh, when I was when I, when I moved to the U S I was labeled as an international student, right? Like I'm not, I'm not American at all. So not only do I have to pay double for school, um, it, this is, this goes for, you know, you were very surprised that I have to pay double for high school. Yeah. Same shit with college, uh, international students just pay double. That's and- crazy because the U S has like the, one of the highest forms of currency. So if you're coming from a place like Iran, it's already pretty expensive and Exactly. That's even double. That's that's nuts. Yeah, exactly. So like also like my dad, like when he like works in Iran, like he has to pay my school tuition, which is in US dollars from like the Iranian rials, uh, like the Persian Toman. It's like it that shit has no value. So he he works, he's a very hard worker. I I look up to him. He's definitely my idol. My dad is number one idol for sure, and most hard working cool. guy I know. But he definitely put everything on the line to make sure that I get that I have a good life and he 100% completed that 100%. I have a, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with where I am. That's, that's cool. That's like kind of you living out his American dream. Exactly. In a way. Exactly. Um, yeah. Even though you live in Canada right now, but you kind of are living like the American dream and <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But basically when I, when I came to the U S uh, I was an international student, meaning like I couldn't work. I couldn't get like your, your average job at Starbucks. I loved it. Dude, I would, dream about working like at Starbucks or Target and stuff like that like with my buddies I was like that is what I want to do like making money and having fun I didn't know like how much of a hell like working these yeah. minimum wage jobs were but at the time that was like everything all I knew right teenagers they get a job at like some random retail store work for minimum wage and it's it's really fun you get a lot of experience like not like not shitting on a minimum wage jobs whatsoever it's like really good experience really fun especially like when you get a couple of your buddies you do you guys do it together it's a very good enjoyable time but uh i never i was never able to do that uh, i was never able to get like an actual job and like people would always ask me like why don't you get a work permit i, I didn't even have a social security number like i had yeah. nothing i was a complete alien in the u.s um so my job there was basically th- this was the plan all along like i go to the u.s finish high school and then I get the fuck out of there, go back to Canada because Canada, I have all the rights. I'm a citizen. I I can do whatever I want in Canada. Um, so being in that situation was kind of leading me to find my own way of making money. Cause like, you know, like as a teenager, you can't not have money. Right. Yeah. So like I had to find a way in my, at the time, my, this is ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. Like my parents would put me like on an allowance, like 50 bucks a week. Cause like I genuinely had no way of making money. And like sometimes 
Uh, you know, 50 bucks a week is not enough. So um, we lived in a suburban neighborhood. I talk about this on my videos a lot, but I, I would go out and like ask my neighbors if they wanted their cars washed and stuff. But I, I did it kind of like as a way, as like I really had no other way of making money and I really needed that money. Mm -hmm. So like I would only do it if it was urgent. Um, but other than that, up until like uh, summer of 11th grade, I was very comfortable um, with living with no aspirations. Um, I was always kind of like iffy about college. I never like took school seriously. Like my grades weren't horrible. I had a 3.4, but compared to like the rest of the people in my, in my school, like everybody was like, also in my friend group, like everybody was like above a four GPA, like 4.5, yeah. 4.6. Like these people were like, it was a college prep school. So a lot of kids would take their academics really seriously. I never took academics se seriously. And I did, never, did you even want to like, when you were young, were you thinking like, I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to be like a crazy entrepreneur. Like that wasn't even a thought. It was more like, I just want to make a little bit of money. Cause that'd be dope to have a little bit of money. I had no vision of my future. I really? had no vision, um, like who I was going to be. I mean, I had options. Like obviously like my dad has his own company. So like one of the, I guess, visions that I had was I'm going to get some random ass fucking degree and go to and work in his company, you know? Yeah. Um, hopefully like, you know, because it, it was always like implanted in my head, like I'm going to take over like my dad's business and like, mm -hmm. you know, everything's going to be going like that. I need a good back education in, back in Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was just I don't know, man. I, I never liked it. It never like sparked anything for me. It was never interesting to me. Like the shit that I would learn in school, like it, I really could not bear. Like I was just it, it was kind of like the the story you would t you talked about, like. Almost everybody in my class, at least my friends, they were just waiting for that bell to ring, bro. No one gave a fuck about what the teacher is saying, which is like pretty normal in high school. I mean, I, I got to be completely honest. As someone has finished high school, yeah, a lot of the shit that they teach you, you will never use in your life. But um, it's mostly because they want to get your brain thinking. You know, they want you to learn how to use your brain, um, which is... Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because there's so many... I've been able to meet like so many successful entrepreneurs, whether they're someone in their young 20s or like a, a grown ass adult in their 50s or 60s. And a lot of them, not only at least a lot of the older guys I know, not only didn't go to college, but a lot of them didn't go to high school. Um, like my grandpa, for example, he's a super successful entrepreneur, ended up kind of like risking everything for like the big bucks. Uh, and he ended up like not, not winning it, but, um, for a period of his life, he was doing very well and he didn't go to high school but yet. He was the most, the most social, uh, charismatic, likable person. Like he was, uh, he, he served in Vietnam too. And I remember when I would meet people, they would just be like, this guy is, is so cool. Um, yet he didn't take any of the traditional classes that people think you need to, to become like a holistic, well-rounded person. Um, so yeah, I, com I completely agree with you. Like you don't really need that stuff. I think it is good to have, uh, a framework for some people. Cause I think some people don't know how to figure shit out on their own. And so school gives you like a, okay, if I don't know what I'm doing, like at least this might be able to help me find out what I should do. Um, but yeah, if, if you're like social on your own and you want to go like learn new things and solve problems on your own, then yeah, school doesn't really matter. Um, but like what, I think you kind of mentioned it to me, like you started this business in high school, right? Yeah. Yeah. So basically this is summer of junior year. Um, I, this was at the point where I was like, damn, I really got to make money somehow. So I came up with a plan spent, I think this was like about the time I had like maybe three thousand three thousand five hundred dollars in my bank account from saved up like birthday gifts and all that stuff over the past years and i was like fuck it dude i'm gonna put it all on like a plane ticket and like a place to stay in canada and i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna work so i went there junior year high school junior think? yeah this this was summer summer of junior year going oh, into wow. senior year yeah so i was just 17 at the time and i was like fuck it dude I'll, i'm just gonna do this so i rented out like the shittiest basement unit i could find and like one of the most horrible <laughs> okay i can't say most horrible it was like a, it was like a shitty part of vancouver it wasn't even like the vancouver city it was like a neighboring city um 
And so I, I just started job hunting basically as soon as I got there. So I had no money in my account. At this point, I had maybe, I think I was left with $400 in my account for, and I had gone to the house for about, I think it was two, two months, two months and like two weeks or something like that. Um, I show up to the house and I have like one of my cousins living like 20 minutes away. So he, he comes to me, he comes to me and like the next morning and we start job hunting. So one thing he told me, one, uh, one thing that I learned, uh, that was very important to me. If you're, if you're younger and you're like looking to get a job and, but like you're failing to get the job, like people aren't calling you back for resumes and stuff like that. Do not apply online do not call do not like show up there and talk to the guys like talk to the manager talk to the like person make an impression where they'll remember you because in their in their eyes you're just like a bunch of text on an email right they're not going to take you seriously if you hand in like resumes and stuff like that so i think the one of the main reasons i got a job so fast was because i went to the people and actually like gave kind of an impression i think it was like second or third day job hunting um fourth day i literally just like started working i went to a mall um the mall was a great spot obviously like bunch of stores uh, a lot of people were it was a newer mall so they were looking for employees i started working at this persian kebab place and oh, there you go dude it was that's the dream <laughs> <laughs> absolutely fucking not uh it, it was good at the time i was uh i was trying to eat a lot i was on my gym gym grind and you know that we had like free food there basically you know rice and kebabs just all day it, yeah. it was it was nice on that and but slowly uh as i like started going through the weeks and like getting these paychecks i was like holy shit like I'm not going to make money. Like I'm going to go back to the U S at a negative profit. I'm fucked. Um, so this was the last thing I wanted. Right. I, I came here with the, with the mentality of making like maybe an extra $1,000, $2,000 so that when I come back to the U S I will spend that money, uh, throughout the year. Yeah. Right. So and like $2,000 at the time was like a big deal for me. And, Dude, the more I did this job, the more I was like, holy fuck, I'm not getting paid enough for this. I am working all day. It was genuinely stressful. I was on my feet about eight hours a day. I was working full time. Obviously, I had to make a living. And it really was not working out. I hated the job. I would come back every single day smelling, reeking like kebabs and <laughs> like just like talking to a bunch of asshole, like a bunch of assholes all day. Like people would... I don't know. At the time, it was a really big deal for me. I had this like series on my Snapchat where I would like take pictures of people with like fat ass orders that leave like zero dollar tips. Like there was this one time this guy came like fucking absolutely fucked up our grill, ordered worth of like five hundred fifty dollars worth of kebabs. Like the motherfucker started like eight in the morning. We finished at twelve. The guy left like a fifteen dollar tip that we That's have wild. to we have to spread between the people. And I was like, dude these guys like the kitchen guys came like an hour early for this shit and like people are restaurant jobs man it's it's fun if you're with one of your buddies but if you as soon as you like this is like this with any job as soon as you start hating something about it the more you start hating other things and the more you start telling yourself holy shit i hate this job you just keep becoming more and more miserable yeah so we're like about a month in and uh, I'm at the gym and I'm like flexing in front of the mirror and then this guy next to me uh, just got done with his workout and fucking big ass dude and he's he's flexing next to me too but he he doesn't know how to pose so he he comes up to me and he's he like taps me on my shoulder and he's like yo bro like I love the way you pose like can you teach me a couple moves um, and so I, I just started talking to the dude super chill guy and literally the next day uh, th that night when we were at the gym he was like dude do you do you have a job? Like, do you work? And I was like, uh, like I have a job right now. I'm like, I'm really looking for a second job. I really need another way of income. Like you were like 17. Gonna, yeah, yeah. I was 17 still. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it was, so I was really, um, I was really in an uncomfortable situation, very uncomfortable situation, like very close to like genuinely not having food on the table. Like I would, <laughs> it's embarrassing to say, but I would like contemplate 
between taking we have like dollar coins in canada yeah i would open up the cash register and at the end of my shift i'd be like do i take this dollar or not yeah. like that's it, it mattered to me so much like little bits of money dude so this guy's like oh you should come you should come do sales uh you should come do sales for me at the time i had no fucking idea what sales was i, I was like is this guy gonna put me in a suit and tie and like what am i gonna do yeah so completely random guy um comes and picks me up the next morning i didn't even tell my parents that i met him because i knew like i didn't even call him or anything about it because i knew they were gonna be like this is a complete yeah this is a complete random person he's offering you a job and he's like saying that it like pays really well and shit like that and he's like you and my dad kept saying to me uh, after like he knew about it he was like you were picked for a reason you were picked for a reason i was like yeah i know i was picked for a reason because like you know there's certain attributes you look for in a salesman yeah but um like like if i were to look for a salesman right now i would look for someone with the attributes of me so yes i was picked for a reason 100 percent. i don't think the guy came up to me randomly and was like yo i really love the for way sure. you pose yeah so yeah anyways the next day the guy comes he picks me up in a truck we drive like 30 minutes down to like one of the bad parts of canada one of the bad parts of vancouver like surrey south surrey it's like um there's some residential buildings so when you're doing door-to-door sales you want to go to not very high high class neighborhoods because then they have really high expectations um, and they are going to expect you to do the job perfectly. And if you go to like very low income neighborhoods, obviously you're not going to get any sales. So yeah. the, the middle class was where we were like always trained to go to. And basically this guy, uh, we, we get out of the car and we just start knocking on doors, right? So I like even to this point, I still don't know what we're doing until he starts pitching the guy that opens the first door. So the first door that opens, uh, we literally go up, we knock on the door, we have like our t-shirts, blue t-shirts, um, it says like the company that we're working with. Yeah, what are, what are you guys selling? Uh, exterior cleaning. So it was, okay, cool. we would sell like the project, so it would be like, hey, we're, we'll clean your windows for like $200. Oh, we're like, we'll pressure wash your driver for 500 bucks, right? And so, uh the sales manager that i'm with uh the guy that was with me at the gym uh he he knocks on he knocks on the first door and basically he's like talking to the guy and i'm like this guy is talking to the guy at the door in a completely different way that he was talking to me so this was like already like holy shit i like i can tell this guy is trained like this guy Mm -hmm. really knows what to say first door he sells it he sells it for a job around 500 dollars, and i ask him like hey so how much did you make off of this? He was like, uh, 25% commission, uh, 125 bucks, 125 bucks in five minutes. When I tell you, I genuinely, <laughs> I laughed at myself. I was like, what the fuck am I? You're like, that's what dude. I make in two days. Like, dude, that was like my, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, retail jobs, like salary jobs, complete fucking joke like i will never work a salary job again yeah um he we did this like thing for about two three days like i just went around with him for like five six hours a day he would knock he would talk to people and he would just give me like five ten percent commission just for like funsies just to like you know you so you could like eat and stuff yeah exactly it was like paying for my time right so yeah um really awesome guy um he taught me a lot and then when he suddenly let me loose i was a fucking animal in sales bro. yeah how much were you making i was let's get it rolling here let's dude get, you let's get can't into okay dude it it was crazy so the first the first the second day that i did sales i closed the sale for three thousand seven hundred. yeah which commission on that was like around like eight hundred dollars I, I don't remember exactly so that that was the biggest like money that i made but the cool thing was that that was not the only sale that i made throughout the day i yeah. made about like six other sales each worth like 300 400 dollars just like small projects and shit bro the money that i was How getting much did, yeah what was your total commission on that on your first day so on every deal that i would like make it was like 25 percent. it was 25 percent uh open and close the deal 25 percent. if 
someone helps you with opening or closing the deal, your percentage goes down by 10. So yeah. if I needed like assistance with closing it and I call my sales manager, he's like, oh yeah, I'll help you out, but I'm going to take off 10%. How much did you make your first day, your very first day? In very, so th the first two days wasn't uh, great in commission. I first day I made, I mean, it was great for my standard, but like first day was like around five hundred, four hundred dollars. That's that's great. Uh, great day. Third day was was what actually like really motivated me for the rest of the time that I was there because I was always trying to reach that like that one deal that I hit that one time. I was always trying to like chase that feeling kind of. Yeah. So yeah, I did that. I did that for about like another two weeks, and then I moved to the U.S. But the thing with that job. It completely changed my mentality on money. Mm -hmm. I loved money. I loved making money, and I was so surprised how easy it was to make money. Yeah. Um, so now keep in mind, I have the sales experience, so I can sell the product, right? And I also know how to do the job. Sometimes they would hold me back at the end of the day, and I would like actually be scrubbing the fucking roof. So I knew how to do the whole thing. I had like the business model in my head. So I was like, dude why the fuck can I not implement this in the US? So I just started off with like basic, like doing, I, I used to wash cars, right? For my neighbors. Yeah. But I never sold them, right? I was never like selling something. I was never like looking at it in a business perspective. So the first day I got back, literally like the next morning, the morning of, I ran out of the house. I started knocking my entire fucking neighborhood, bro. Every, almost every single house around me, I was knocking and I was like, hey, like I'm, uh, I'm this kid, like I'm a senior in high school. Uh, I like do car washes and stuff like that. I'm doing like your neighbor, blah, blah, blah. And I like, I have them on monthly um, car washes. I was wondering if you wanted to do it. And like, when you do a really good job, these people, like, not only do they refer you to their buddies, they also like, they, they keep asking you to come back. So I had like a bunch of retaining clients and then it hit me. I was like, oh dude, I, I know how to clean gutters. Right. Yeah. And that's like, what, 30 minutes you spend, you clean out some fucking gutters and that's 200 bucks. So our profit margin started going up really high. So I had to, I, I got one of my buddies on this business. That's right. So we started doing it kind of together and then it started getting really big at like to a point where we, we couldn't really like do it ourselves. We kind of had to do like multiple jobs at the same time. So we had to hire someone else. And then we kept just like bringing our friends onto this and it just kind of took off from there. It, nice. it really just took off from there. It, it was crazy because every week, every month was better than the month before. We would do every month better than the month before. We were we were big on Yelp. We were huge on Yelp, actually. Oh, no way. Um, so company had pretty good reviews. So, so you literally went from door-to-door -door sales yourself, uh, making good money, and then you're like, I want to start my own business, and exactly. then hired your friends, and then like, how much were you bringing in from that Like at the peak? So uh, at the peak, it was probably... Uh, I had my first 10 grand month, um, maybe I think six months into the business. Nice. And then after that, it was just like ballpark of 10 grand. So I was making like six figures yeah. while I was sitting in class next to a bunch of other kids that were like, that's crazy. I had no idea what they were doing with their life. Yeah. So it was not only was, was I like financially stable was, which is a really big deal, especially to me because I was never financially stable. I was never able to like go somewhere to a restaurant and like not think about like dude how much is the food like is it an expensive place like so like having that feeling was really good but it also boosts your confidence like when you have when you set yourself aside and you're actually working towards a goal that sets you aside from other people at least it was for me my ego was through the fucking roof and yeah, it's like sure. been through the roof since that like i feel like that business model taught me how to be like a, a grown up, a, yeah, a mature sure. person that like, like I don't talk to you like how I talk to my clients, right? Like you learn how to, you learn how to communicate with people. You learn how to, um, transfer, like basically talk about values, how, why something is valuable. Why should you invest your money in this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot for sure. It's it about life. Yeah. I, I totally feel you. Yeah. By the way, like try and keep it like, uh, a, f a fist away a from fist the mic. away from the way it doesn't hear you breathing. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, interesting. Well, that's great, dude. Cause that, that's how you learn early on, bro. Some people don't learn that lesson until much later in life. And it's cool hearing how like at first it was just trying to make some money and then it turns into an actual business. And then 
it, at what point was that, did that go on from the start of that until you started social media or did you have anything else in between then? Because that was obviously like your first real entrepreneurial endeavor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like what, so, was, what was next up? Yeah, exterior cleaning was definitely my, it was an amazing ATM. It was bread and butter for me. Yeah. Um, but so I actually, I actually still have it active. We do a couple of projects here and there, but it's no not way. like, yeah, it's, it's not like that big right now. But, um, so social media, when I moved to Vancouver, I still had the cleaning company and like, I had these plans of like how numbers are going to work when I moved to Canada. Like I'm going to handle everything on like the business side, like hiring people, you know, training salesmen, stuff like that. I was going to handle everything on my own. I had all these big plans with continuing the business and all of that. But then kind of out of nowhere, I, I really thought to myself, um, I went back and I started working for the same company that I did the summer before for about a month. And then this guy that I was working with at the time, I was posting just like some random just like shit posting gym videos, like yeah. B-rolls of just me talking and like some weightlifting and stuff. On TikTok? Yeah, on TikTok. On TikTok. Wait, wait, but it when was, was like, this like timeline wise? This was, uh, I mean, I, I was posting for like seven months, but I was at like 800 followers, my videos. Oh, I thought you told me you like started posting and blew up out of nowhere. No, no, no. Listen, uh, it, I had like 800 followers. I wasn't active. So oh, okay. the thing was that I would post like one video every two months. Uh, like that, yeah, yeah, like so just I like I definitely, I, have a I definitely yeah. was not. So you weren't trying to like be a TikTok. No, 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 you no, were no, just no, like no. posting for fun. No, yeah, yeah, no, I was doing okay, it literally cool. just for funsies because gotcha. I thought edits were pretty sick. I liked, yeah. I liked it. Um, but I had like 800 followers. Each video had like a thousand views. But then I started getting my haircuts from Lance Baker, my barber. He's pretty famous. So uh, after showing up on his videos a couple of times, I, I started getting kind of traction on my own so even though i just had like some gym videos and if you scroll if you scroll down enough in my tiktok you'll definitely find it yeah um and how'd you even how do you meet lance baker how, he how he, he went to the same gym as me and so he had he this, from vancouver no no no. I, this was when i was in california oh, this okay. is when i was in california yeah. yeah so uh yeah so one of my buddies uh did some recording stuff with him and I was like, dude, you got to put me on. Like, I, I need to get a good haircut. And he was like, I bet. So I, I went to Lance's. I went to Lance's barber shop, his fucking garage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he recorded a video. It, it did really well. The vid the first video we did together did really well. Um, so he called me in for a second video, like three weeks after. Did another one. Did really well again. Just constantly, the videos that I was in would blow up over and over again. And at this point, I had about 60,000 followers um, when I had not posted anything, right? Really? I went from 800 to 60K without posting a single video. This was all coming from Lance. Um, so, yeah, I, basically at this point, I knew Lance. I had talked to Dylan Latham a couple times, and they were both, like, in my ear, like, bro, get on social media, get on social media, get on social media. You have to do this. And then this kid I was working with at the at the company uh, in Canada was one of the workers, and he was like, "Dude, you have sixty k on TikTok, and you're going door to door. You are a fucking idiot." Like I had to, that kid had to tell me that I'm a yeah. fucking idiot for like not using this potential, and it clicked. That night, I started posting videos, and first video I posted, it was like one point five mil. Second video I posted, one mil views. Like, and what were what type of content were those first videos? So the first few videos, I, like self help. So, no, I, I blew up. I blew up because of my haircuts, right? So a yeah. lot of people were like asking me questions of like, how do you style your hair? Or like, yeah. how do you like when you wake up in the morning? Like, what do you ask your barber? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I made like my first few videos. Even to this day, whenever I talk about my hair, or, like anything haircut, I related, saw that like, on your page. Yeah, it they blows get, like up. three million views or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a very general thing that a lot of people are curious about. Because even I like. I hate my hair personally. And uh, even I, like if I see a video and someone does have a dope haircut or it's like someone well-known, like an actor or a, a model or something and they're, and they're talking about it, like I could probably go on my TikTok save videos and there'll be a guy talking about how to style his hair. It's very broad. Yeah. It's very, um, I don't know the right word for like, like a sought after type of content, self care, self help, stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that's good. I think you kind of hit it like right on the head. Um, like starting off with that category. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's a very broad category. There's a lot of content to be made. Yeah. So 
that started like around what time did it start popping off like june july this was uh wait come a little come a little closer this was about like right after my birthday so it's june J- july around july like early july i Damn, started so popping y- off you have went from like 50k to 400k oh just about 400k in like a month and a half two two months two and a half months? two and a half months yeah it's been, it's been i haven't hit my three months yet so it's been that's wild bro that's a crazy spurt like that's how it goes to tiktok just you can blow up overnight but i think a lot of people will like see someone blow up and they'll think that it's easy in reality, it takes a long time, and even if for sure, even if your content did start blowing up relatively fast compared to other people, you had to build like the skills and the confidence to create that good content. You know what no, I mean? No, one hundred percent. No, like, when I yeah, go ahead. When I, I when I started like doing TikTok, like when I picked up the phone and just looked at myself in so, the camera, and I was like. Fuck no! I'm not hitting that record button. No way. It's it's uncomfortable. It's weird. It's, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, 100. percent Yeah, you go back and watch my. You'd have to scroll for a minute to find my old videos, but those videos sucked. <laughs> and but that's that's a good thing though, because I like, I'm sure a year like I, I look back a year ago on my videos last summer. It's like what the fuck? And I'm like, what what was I doing? And a year from now, I'll probably look back and be much better. Hopefully, and hopefully, hopefully, yeah, and be like. Those are cringy or or those are weird. I think that's a good way to look at it. Like you, I always say this, you should look back on your younger self and and, and, uh, (laughs) and think it's cringy or whatever. Exactly. Uh, Exactly. If you don't think what you did in the past, like couple of years was not like weird, you have not improved. Look at like the guys that are absolutely killing it right now. Um, For anyone, like specifically on social media, anyone from Jake Paul to Bryce Hall, both, both those guys were so hated so hated like there was a time when jake paul was the most hated person on the internet bryce hall everyone was like this just guy's like, cringy he's, a clown, as he's yeah. such a clown and now he's like a cool dude him. and he just uh he just like won his first like bare knuckle bare boxing knuckle. like i mean i look at the dude and i go respect i don't 100%. even like i think it's cool that he was able to come from like someone with uh you know not much social awareness um, cause I know like you look back at his old videos and you're like, this kid probably got bullied in high school. Just like I got bullied in middle school. There's nothing wrong with that. And then you, you know, you become like, you just continue to work on yourself and, and level up and get to the next spot. And now he's killing it. Same with Jake Paul, both killing it. Yeah, um, no, he's hilarious. I, Bryce Hall. I love Bryce. That kind of <laughs> brings me to my, my next question. How do you think, obviously you make money from social media right now like directly from views and everything, but I know you also have a few different businesses, right? How, how does social media play into like the current businesses you have? Yeah. So, um, I never, I never did social media for like the fame or anything like that. I did it solely to drive traffic, have an audience to drive traffic towards my businesses. So, um, I don't, like, I don't think anything good comes from, I mean, it definitely has its ups, but like, there's not much value to being famous, you know, like, oh, this guy knows you, but how are you capitalizing? So like my, my dad would always tell me, like, I would tell him like, Hey, like dad, look, I'm at like 60,000 followers now on TikTok. And he's like, but how are you capitalizing off of it? You know? So. uh, I guess it depends how you look at it though. Cause some people think it's cool. My dad actually was like, when I hit, when I told my dad that I was making videos, when I when I told him I hit 300K or 200K, whatever it was, he got hella excited. Really? Yeah. He was like, no way. That's awesome. Like, he was, like, bragging about it to his friends. Like, <laughs> he'd, like, FaceTime me and, 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 like, show his friends and be like, like, check out, check out my son. Like, he's TikTok famous, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? No, my dad does, my dad does the same thing. No, it, okay. it makes me very happy to finally be the person that my dad is happy to That's cool. introduce to other people. Yeah. Yeah. But, dude. I'm so sorry. What was the, like, the original? Oh, so I was saying, so obviously you have a lot of eyes on you right now because your videos are, are like, catching crazy traction. What, like, what's your current business? You have that Base Body Works, right? Is that what it's called? No, no, no. no. Base Body Works is Lance's company. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I just do, I just do, like, it's, I don't even get paid for it. Uh, well, I, I, I do get paid for it, but it's not like, oh, I'm an affiliate for Base. Yeah. Like, I, I just make videos. He pays me. Like, he, it's, it's kind of. That's what do you what do you time. make your most money off right now? Most money is probably this one, uh, like this brand deal that I'm working with right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. 
If you, don't wanna, if you can't talk about it, no. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't like saying the, yeah. I don't want to say the name or yeah. anything like that because it's kind of like a, sure. a different relationship. But sure. um, they're paying me very good. They're paying me almost half of what TikTok pays me per month. Um, wow. And TikTok views, I mean, uh, I'm not going to say how much I make from it, but just imagine like around like 60, 70 cents per thousand views. Go look at my videos, how many thousands, views they have. Thousands so, a month, thousands a month. TikTok's paying uh, crazy right now. Yeah, it's definitely over, uh, it's definitely over the five figure mark. Like, but it's good for you. It's good. Yeah. It's dope. I mean, dude, and that allows you to kind of, I know I do this in my current business. If you can make money from your views, then you can kind of reinvest the rest of it into like the projects you're working on. 100. And that's where the real money is going to come one day. That's where the real value is. Um, Kind of like you said, though, being famous is only good if you can use it for uh, for leverage for other things you're working on. Yeah. But as far as my as far as my other businesses go, I mean, I told you this already. I don't make money off of my businesses. I don't make money off of the skincare brand. I don't make money off of the clothing brand. Uh, it's just everything that I make from those businesses, everything I'm reinvesting. That's great. Uh, not really they're making definitely enough money for me not to be having to put anything from my pocket like we make we make decent sales i just choose yeah. not to like i would much rather scale sure, for know? sure because i i it's don't see yeah i don't see social media as like a lifetime thing i'm not going to do this like for the rest of my life you never know you might my turn yeah, yeah you cool. never know exactly yeah but i'd rather have like a kind of safety back of sure. where i know like my businesses are eating well you know yeah well so okay, you're 19. You're killing it. You're making money. You're you're uh, decently famous on social media. It's only getting bigger. It's only growing. If there was, actually, I have a I have a first a first question, and then this will be the follow up question. Do, have you ever gone through like a period of like extreme darkness or like a hole or or something that you just you were like hopeless and 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 didn't know what to do and have you ever gone through a period like that or not really? Definitely um, definitely in high school. Um, again, like before I went to Canada for the for doing the job. Yeah. Like I had no purpose in life. Yeah, like just felt I, lost. I, I knew that I like I didn't even know it for a certain. Like I, I was kind of like the mindset was like, oh, I don't think I don't think I'm gonna go to college. I might go to like some trade school or something, learn a trade, either like do H back, like that's pretty decent money for someone that doesn't like studying yeah. uh, i was gonna do like hvac or like i don't know like s some high paying job where i learn a skill uh, a mm -hmm. specific skill and then i get paid for that job but i never really looked into it i was never like a aspiring person i thought that everything would come with time and i just have to let it sit uh not true i'm gonna be honest uh I did get my social media and all of that. Like I got very lucky with it, but had I not had that business mindset that I got when I put myself in that really uncomfortable situation, going to Canada, sure. spending all of my money genuinely, um, I didn't know if I was going to eat like the next night. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's crazy when you throw yourself into, I say this all the time. This is like my motto. If you put yourself in a hole you either get stuck down there and you die or you figure out a way to climb out. Kind of like in Batman when he has to like rise or whatever. I think it's cool. Um, but that leads me to the next question. So if I was someone, um, whether someone your age, younger, older, and I still felt like I was lost myself and I look at you and I'm like, you're young, you're doing really well, you're making a ton of money and it's only getting better. What would your advice be? to someone who like admires you and your current lifestyle and all that, what's your advice for uh, how do I start and where do I start? Yeah. So I talk a lot. Um, I think from someone that went from being really broke, like really not having any opportunities, money really like money doesn't buy happiness, but money buys options, right? You can, you can choose uh, like kind of having the option of like, I don't know where where do I go with this. Uh, having the having multiple options ahead of your life, uh, kind of like, oh, I can choose this path. I can choose this path. Or if this doesn't work out, I can do this. You know, that's amazing because I don't stress about money. I don't stress about my future that much. Um, I kind of just 
work, but I never had this mindset. And I think one of the best things any teenager is able to do in life is 100% to get a job. Um, that is my number one recommendation. I feel like school lacks, um, teaching you about independence because sure. you're constantly being told what to do, do this, hand this in, do that. Um, and it's kind of, uh, you're learning, you're learning things in a way of like read and write, read and write, take in information like that. And then just write it out. Like it's, it's a, it's not an optimal way of learning in my opinion. Yeah. When you get put into like a real life scenario and a real workspace, you actually learn how to, I feel like manage, uh, stress, manage like a lot of things that you Be wouldn't independent. learn. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. There's, it just, there's so many kids that don't get their first job until after high school or even in like some cases after, after college. college. And at that point it's too late for you, honestly. But if you're getting a job at like 13 years old, like I got a work permit when I was 13 years old, worked at a restaurant. I worked at restaurants all through college or all through high school, three different places. And I just was like, dude, this fucking sucks. Like I still put on a smile every day. Like you should, that's just a good motto for life. But when you work early on, you realize like, okay, this is what this is like. This sucks. I don't want to do this again. Then you really start to think, okay, like I need to figure out something else. That's the way I look at it. You know yeah, what I mean? 100%. No, I think uh, definitely not having school being like the main thing in your routine. I feel like having routine, like even, even if you like, even if you like play sports, right? Like playing team sports and stuff like that, where you where you talk to other people, socialize, you you learn teamwork, you learn how to communicate. Uh, I think that's really beneficial too. Like not only just getting a job, but like I was never I was never like a sporty kid. I never joined like a team or anything. But like really, yeah, nothing. yeah, no, 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 nothing. Wow. I mean, I did <laughs> I did a I did some tennis when I was a freshman. I was forced to. I, I think I did but, tennis for a little bit. Yeah, definitely got picked. You on seem for like that. a tennis guy. Oh fuck, <laughs> that is not the look I'm going for. But <laughs> no, tennis. I dude, I wish I could get good at tennis, honestly. But yeah, you're right. Sports are, sports are, sports are great because it teaches you competition. It teaches you obviously how to like get along well with other people um, in stressful situations. I think I learned just as much, if not more, about life about leadership, about um, about getting people to follow a certain goal while playing football than I did in school. I don't feel like school really taught me anything at all. Do you, on the topic of school, specifically high school, do you still keep in contact with any of those people or like Fuck like any of the guys that Fuck like no. no you don't talk Fuck to anyone no. from high school uh, like what all your current like friends and and peers right now are they are they majority people you've met in the past they, few months they are to a people year? that they are people that do not go to my high school they are people that i met from um i mean i have i have a, i have friends that i met from my high school times you know that go to a different high school um that i'm friends with like my business partner and like one of my brands goes to a different school. My business partner for my clothing brand went to another school. Um, it's like we'd, my school was very read, do this, pass this grade, go home. Yeah. You know, it was not like, they were not very innovative um, with the kids' minds. Yeah, it was very, it was a very academic school. So, and also like I, I don't know. I don't talk to anyone from my high school. Maybe like, yeah. maybe like two kids I hit up like once a month. Were but, you, uh, were you like bullied or picked on or anything like that uh, in high school? So coming up, uh, definitely like, like freshman year, sophomore year, um, I was picked on cause I, I had a, I had a girlfriend that was a grade above me and, uh, the people in the grade above me, like they were, they were all either trying to get at her or like in the past, like they were trying to get at her. So, so you were the enemy. So yeah, I, I was definitely enemy. I was getting picked on. I, I was a I was a really easy target because uh obviously I was I was very short. I'm six one now. I'm like I used to be like five three back in like freshman oh, grade. It was fucked. Um I was I was skinny as I am still skinny, but like I was like genuinely anorexic, like unhealthy skinny. And obviously I was from the Middle East. They knew that. Uh my English wasn't great. So like they would just like they would taunt me a lot, but I'm I'm not gonna lie, this is really controversial, but it definitely built character. 
It 100% built character. Yeah. And I say that without a doubt. Like, if I I was, because I was like, looking back, like ninth grade, I was a ninth grade, 10th grade, I was a fucking cornball, bro. I was so weird. Like, actually, I was so weird. Um, But yeah, I definitely built character, built maturity, um, definitely upgraded my fashion because I got bullied uh, over it a lot. That's dude, good. You, you need that. Dude, I remember... Uh, dude, first... you wore that yesterday, bro. I was like, fuck <laughs> you, bro. Dude, I, uh, I remember my first... I think I think bullying can be good. In some cases, it depends if... Um, it depends how you look at it. Because it's not for no reason. I think you also need to understand, though, that uh, when people say stuff like that, it is coming from a place of insecurity um, in their own self-esteem. But 100%. I remember, like... I remember first day of pledging my fraternity in college. I walked into the chapter room, and my style was atrocious. And this kid came up to me. His name's Jake. I love this guy to death. Um, he came up, and he like looked me up and down, and he was like, if you ever wear that outfit again, you are not welcome back in this fucking house. <laughs> and... <laughs> And like, and I tell that story and people are like, that's so fucked up, whatever. I'm like, dude, that's good because I literally did look hideous. I had like checkered multicolored vans, black. I remember my outfit, check, checkered multicolored vans, black socks, uh, cargo shorts, a tight U of A red shirt, like <laughs> terrible haircut. I mean, I looked so fucking beat and had someone not. If he would have just came up and say, hey, like, I I suggest you change your style, bro. That's not really how people dress here. I wouldn't have done anything. But the fact that he came up and said, if you show up to this house again looking like that, you are not welcome here. Like, I will kick you the fuck out. That actually forced me to go to the store that day, buy new clothes. And you can call that fucked up or messed up all you want. But my style genuinely got better, which made more people like me, made girls want to talk to me. Like the bullying did make me a better person. It leveled. Yeah, it yeah. got me to the next no, level. A lot of people are like, dude, you're you're such a fucking you're such a sheep, bro. Like, why are you following with like what other people say? I mean, dude, like to a certain extent, constructive criticism, 100 percent to a certain extent. I think it's not bad to try to fit in, like definitely stand out and like. You know, you have a very unique personality. Like I can tell, like when I talk to you, you have a lot of, you're a very open-minded person and you have a lot of experience in life in general. Um, A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people have issues with that shit. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've been, every uh, chapter in my life has started off rough and then it got so much better. Like start of high school, freshman year, bullied, uh, picked on no friends, no girls liked me. I mean, it, it sucked. Freshman year of high school sucked. By the end of high school, I was very confident. Like I was playing football. I had lots of friends. I was the guy planning the parties. It was so much fun. Then I get to college reset fucking shit on. I was one of the most hated kids in my pledge class. No one liked me. No one had respect for me. Um, and then at the end of college president, um, having tons of fun, very confident in myself, and it was great. And then you go to like chapter three, which is like becoming, you know, a uh, TikToker, starting my own business and everything. Um, that was at the end of college. Sucked that first. Everyone talked. No one ever talked shit to my face because of the TikToks, but people did talk behind my back. Um, I, I just think people are pussies and they don't want to come up and say something to you. Um, but then, you know, couple months later once my tiktok starts doing well finally after that rough stage you know like it's going great making money business is doing well getting lots of views and everything and then all of a sudden it's like good again so i think that's kind of the way life works it's i like to look at it as like a mountain you'll hit a peak and it'll seem like the best point in your life and then it goes down and then all of a sudden you're in like a really shitty period and you're like in a period of darkness and i think that's necessary it's just like night and day, happy and sad, hot and cold. There needs to be this like up and down period. Yeah. And like nowhere, yeah, nowhere in life you're ever going to just constantly go up in a straight line. Like you will, that shit will never like not in business, not in like quality of life. You will always like when they say more money, more problems. Yeah, definitely, definitely definitely true. Like the more you, a lot of people think like, oh dude, 
when I have so when I have all of this money, like what could I possibly worry about, right? That's not the case but at that all. That is no not way. the case. Where is the money coming from? There's so absolutely much, yeah. There's so much work that goes in. It's a lot deeper than that. Uh, I have a question for you. Go for it. Uh, what do you think of? So I see a lot of like these podcasts on my TikTok, and a lot of girls specifically get asked this question of, um, like, how do you like it now doing like the like influences or whatever, like. How do you like it, like, doing social media? And a lot of them are always, like, oh, it's, like, a lot of people think it's easy. It's a lot of work. Like, oh, like, I have to, like, wake up. Like, yeah, I, I agree. You don't have, as a content creator, as someone who, like, does social media, you don't have any weekends or anything, right? So you're, like, you're technically constantly working, right? Yeah. You're constantly either in meetings, checking emails, talking to people, working on your own content. What do you think about, like, social media as a job would you rather do this or would you is there something else you'd rather do oh i love this um but it is like i love my job i love being able to um be in control of my own ship you know um whether it is social media or the businesses i have but there's never a break you know what i mean it, yeah. it is i wake up i work all day long um, and then I go to bed and I do it every single day of the week. Even when I go on vacation, I'm working. Um, I was visiting my friends the other day in San Diego and I had to pull out my computer. It's Sunday. Everyone's hung over. Everyone's watching football. And I pulled out my computer and started working and planning for the week and seeing what meetings I have. And they're like, bro, why don't you just relax and take a break? I'm like, bro, you don't get to fucking take a break, bro. Like that is part of it. But, um, it's fun though. I like working all the time. Um, 100%. And if you love if you love what you do, it's you'll do it with passion every day. 100%. So I th yeah, I'm excited for the future. I think uh I think it's just getting started and you know, once again, like I don't know the answers. I think a lot of people look at others who have like found success and they and they think like this person knows the answers. That's not true. Yeah. There's a new bigger problem every single day, but with time and with experience, I think that builds confidence where you can then say, okay, there's a problem in front of me. I don't know what the answer is, but I will find the answer. And I think, like I said, with experience, you build that sort of confidence. What about you? We're, we'll, this, we'll kind of finish it off with this. What's the next step for uh, Sam? The next step. Uh, so we, we just made a big move on my skincare brand. We just hired like 20 something people nice. um, last week. So we got a lot of people working on content ideas, managing social media accounts, stuff like that. So uh, hopefully business is going to be doing pretty good. Um, and for the near future, I mean, honestly, as as far as I'm seeing it right now, definitely going to be keeping up with the content. Um, you know, it's really because I'm so new to this, because I'm so new to just like social media in general. I'm kind of riding the boat and seeing where it takes me. I don't really, sure. I'm not like in your situation. I don't have like full control over the ship yet. Like, I don't know. Like I, it's definitely, it's still very new to me. Like all this stuff that I'm doing, like I had never like dude, four months ago, if you asked me yeah, like, what that's I, you wild. Know, you've, fucking, you've seen some growth very fast. Yeah. No, if you, if you four months ago asked me like, would I get flown out to Austin to get on a podcast with you? Like, <laughs> yeah, that shit was like the farthest thing from the truth. So, Right now, I'm kind of kind of seeing how it goes. I mean, uh, definitely will be focused on business, um, social media, but nothing, nothing that I can like say to you right now that'll move you. Sure. There's nothing like big. No, that's happening. fine. I think that's great. I think you don't need to know the answer. You just have to keep going and, and like I said, have that confidence that you'll figure it out, and you will figure it out. You've done very well for yourself already. I'm excited to see you know, what you'll do. Um, you're one of those guys that's blowing up like crazy right now. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen next. But I think that's a great way to end it. Sam Zia. Um, I'll go ahead and throw his uh, handles in the in the description below. And if you guys have any questions for myself or him, I'll try and answer them as best as possible, both in the description and then also throw some comments for the next podcast we do. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and give it a like. We'll catch you in the next one.